think we just got more beer. <laughs> We've been, I've been waiting, actually waiting for the pizza since 6 or 7 p.m. So sorry, it isn't, it isn't here yet. So in a bit, hopefully. I'm not a big fan of mics. Do you guys hear me okay if I don't use the mic? Is that cool? Alright, uh, my name is Juan Vasquez. I'm very thankful to uh, Lucas and Mid Stage Ventures and General Assembly for having me. Uh, I'm going to tell you how I spend my days, but this one I'm going to be talking about. How have I taken technology into Central and South America and Spain, mainly the Spanish speaking world? Twitter handle is up top. Feel free to follow. Uh, so, real quick, a little about myself. Everything you see in red is the Spanish speaking world. That is my task. My goal is to get our technology, Nation Builders technology, in the hands of Spanish speakers across all of these red countries. Um, we've been around for about four years. Our technology is geared around participation and involvement in politics, government, nonprofits, advocacy. So that's what I do. Uh, I'm also a firm bike advocate. I bike to and from work. I encourage everybody to embrace two wheels instead of four. Uh, and if anybody watches Mad Men, I used to be an advertising guy, so I threw in a little picture of that. Uh, real quick, a few key points that I'm going to highlight. Uh, first and foremost, to break into new countries uh, as a technology person and startup person, uh, I've been, I have to identify the community of international techpreneurs and innovators. So the way we see it, any given country probably has like five or ten people that will really get your technology off the bat. That is my goal. I want to find those five or ten people. Uh, Lucas is definitely one of them in Brazil and I hope to meet more of you guys here. Uh, also, uh, what's the pain that the people you're talking about? What are they, what's their pain and how do you solve it? Uh, how does personal branding and thought leadership fall into it? And then lastly, a few challenges and opportunities. So real quick, here we go. Uh, all of these little dots, these are what I call one screw. So it's like this international web of people that understand why participation-driven technology makes sense. Um, interesting story. These two dots in Argentina come thanks to the dot in Spain. Uh, the dot in Colombia comes thanks to the dot in Australia. So I've never really developed a firm relationship that develops into business only because of my relationships in that one country. Uh, and as you can see, we're talking Europe to like South America. These are international, a very small international community of people. Uh, so I wanted to highlight that. It's very important as, as you guys think about bringing your technology to other countries, understand that it's a larger international uh, community of people that will help you make it happen. Uh, we're gonna take a little time out. And anybody that's on Twitter, I encourage you guys to tweet this out right now. I will wait as well. Uh, but this idea of how do we go into new, into new countries, you break into a country by finding the five people who get your technology and align with your vision. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Montesvaz. Shout out to at General Assembly and hashtag TechLA. But I encourage everybody to really think about that, right? Like the idea that we're not gonna do it by ourselves and we're not gonna do it with the only resources that we have on the ground there. So capitalize on that international community of people that love and appreciate technology. Uh, quick story, I already alluded to it. This is Enrique Peñalosa. He was the Green Party candidate in Colombia. We had presidential elections in March. I'm originally Colombian my, my, uh, myself. And I spent about four months trying to get them to use us. I talked about data segmentation, geocoding, data sharing, social media integration, everything that you know we think is like more advanced ways of approaching technology. The thing that got them, their hosts kept crashing. So their website kept coming down. Nation Builder does hosting and that's why they went with us. So that like 95% of awesome features that we offered, that didn't really matter. What mattered was that, that hosting, we have better servers. And so they went with us. And that opened up a world to them. That eventually recruited about 500 volunteers in two days to run like advocacy and, and electoral and, and polls and stuff. So, you know, they, their website ended up being posted on everything. Everything just because they had shitty servers. That's it. Uh, personal branding comes into it. So if I go into a country and I'm like, hey, 
we have really cool technology, uh, this trust really comes into the picture. So what I find is that opportunities like this, where you build a little bit of thought leadership for yourself, where you get a chance to sell yourself instead of your product, that is a great way to enter a market. So what you see here is my Twitter, my LinkedIn, and my website. They're very similar. Just like Coke has a similar branding element, I encourage every entrepreneur out there to ask, what is your brand? What does it stand for? What does it look like? So when you go into new countries, people are excited to work with you before working with the product. The product is secondary. Your expertise and in confidence in what you're selling, that comes first. So really embrace your brand, any event that you can go speak at, how active you are online, what content you share, that's what's gonna help you break into a new, into a new market. Uh, some very specific challenges I've faced. Anytime I go into a new country, Mexico, Spain, Argentina, people want exclusivity. And if you're trying to acquire new users, exclusivity is gonna hurt them. They might get you a large chunk of users short term, but then after that, once the market opens, they're gonna own it. I don't want that, we don't want that. Our technology is based on participation and access. So that's what, so one thing I faced. Uh, Lucas and I have talked about this a lot, language. Our platform is in uh, French, Spanish, and English, not quite Portuguese. Even though Brazil is ready, they're one of the most ready markets to embrace new technologies. Our language is a big thing. Also, cultural norms and expectations. Um, our technology is based on grassroots organizing. You can do door knocking, phone banking, Twitter banking, all that stuff. In a lot of countries, people are not used to having someone knock on their door and ask them, what do you care about? What are the important issues in your community? Or getting a call and saying, hey, will you vote for my candidate? Those things are not really seen as normal, and that's been a huge factor for us. Also, the lack of connectivity. I think Argentina this year is gonna break the 50% barrier of internet access countrywide. So if you're talking about technology, but the country itself has little access, clearly there's gonna be a disconnect there. So just understand, there are ways around it though, right? Like, we, we can get creative with it, but there are challenges nonetheless. Uh, lastly, a few pro tips that I've learned along the way. Be patient, you know, just nothing's gonna happen in a week. Four months, five months, understand what that relationship cycle looks like, and go from there. Just like anything, if I'm talking to somebody attractive at a bar, I gotta be confident. Same with, with biz, international business. Know what you're selling and own it. Know what you bring to the table. Uh, like the Spanish guys that brought us Argentinian business, it was all because a relationship and a friendship was developed. So make friends. The profits are not the bottom line, the friendships are. So use that. Uh, I already talked about connectivity, and uh, that's where creative solutions come in. If internet is not really there, how do we make it work? Figure it out. Uh, and again, just don't be short-sighted. When you go into a new country, it's gonna take time, it's gonna take way more resources than you probably expected, but it can still happen. And uh, that's what I got for you guys. Uh, if anybody's curious to talk about it after, or any questions, I'm more than happy to chat with you all. Thank you.